In his Hall of Fame career, VJ Singh has played and won all over the world. In fact, he's won a golf tournament in 15 different countries. An amazing career for anyone. Even more amazing that it all started on the South Pacific island of Fiji, more than 4,000 miles from the North American mainland. To do what he's done, it's very tough. I mean, he grew up playing golf. All the top stars, top players in the world were American or Europeans. To achieve what he achieved is wonderful performance. Vijay Singh's journey to the PGA Tour was anything but typical. As an 11-year-old, he often walked through drainage ditches to reach the Nandi Airport Golf Club where he would practice. By the age of 16, he knew golf was going to direct his voyage through life. It's come a long way and dealt with a lot of adversity, obviously. You know, playing in tours in Asia in the early 80s, I can't imagine what that was like to where he is now. I mean, it's a different world. He's pretty much played all over the world. You know, started playing his best golf here in America and really is an incredible human being and a great player. Singh burst onto the PGA Tour scene in the spring of 93, winning the Buick Classic and taking PGA Tour Rookie of the Year honors. And in these 16 years since, he's been virtually unstoppable, a rare athlete who gets better with every season that passes. It's incredible, his work ethic, he still plays as many practice rounds, hits more balls, works harder in the gym than anyone, and really is one of those guys who's got better and better every year. For the moment, his resume includes 29 PGA Tour wins, three major championships, 22 international victories, and one of the greatest seasons of all time. In 2004, Singh won an astounding nine times, collecting a record $10.9 million on his way to becoming the number one golfer in the world. To do what he did at his age, uh, to really put everything he had into getting to be the best player he could it was amazing and nine times to win in a season is phenomenal what a remarkable story really not too many pros you know, had that kind of success and especially that late it's very similar to what Ben Hogan went through you know for him to be honored I think is fantastic he's put a lot into it and it's nice to see him taking the reward out of it his is the quintessential story of perseverance and this son of an airline mechanic from a small island nation has grown into one of the enduring leaders of the sport. You see that picture of BJ when he was young? He had like a perm. I hadn't seen that before. And now to present BJ for induction is a senior partner of Forsman Little and, C and CEO and chairman of IMG, Mr. Ted Forsman. Thank you, George. I am uh, really delighted and honored to be here to introduce my good friend and uh, golf partner, B.J. Singh. And I'm very proud to be here as he receives golf's highest honor. So let me begin by telling you actually how we met. Uh, which is a story that, like a lot of stories in golf and sports in general, was begun by Mark McCormick. Uh, Mark and I were very good friends. Back in 1993, uh, I had just uh, bought a company called Gulfstream, which was not doing very well. And I had uh, become chairman and CEO of that company. And it was in the papers and so on. And Mark and I were having lunch that day. And um, he said, I read the papers about you. I said, yeah, you're a great marketer and a very good businessman. Let me ask you a question. What would you do if you were I? And he said, tell you the truth, I would resign. I don't think you have a chance. So I said, well, very funny, Mark. But other than that, what would you do? And he said, I'd play in the AT&T, and um, I'll arrange it for you, and I'll get you a partner. And he did. And I met VJ who was my partner in 1993 and on, in the uh, putting green of Spyglass. And we've been friends ever since. We've played in the AT&T every year for the past 14 years. And one year he played so well, he won the pro part of the tournament by so many shots that we almost won. He almost carried me along. Um, anyhow, that's how we met. Um, we've had a very close relationship for 
all these 14 years and in everything other than golf and investments and business advice and this and that, um, we have a little bit of a father-son relationship uh, with me, of course, as the father. In golf, it's very different. BJ is very supportive of my meager talents, but a hard taskmaster. In fact, in golf, I think you could say that I have a father who's 20 years younger than I am. Um, it kind of goes like this. This year, for example, we played in a tournament in Scotland together. And uh, in the practice round, the, the, the day before the tournament began, I was fortunate enough to play one of the two or three best rounds of my life. I wasn't playing with VJ that day, but we had dinner together. I told him all about it. And um, he looked at me and said, that's great. He says, let's see if you can do it tomorrow. Um, which I did not do. <laughs> we went out and played our first round. And um, after it was over, he had had a very good round, seven under par. And I was at lunch waiting for him to show up. And there he came on the television set being interviewed. And as part of the interview, the interviewer asked him, well, haven't you been playing with this guy for a lot of years together? And he said, yeah. And he said, why do you do that? And he said, well, because we're, BJ said, we're good friends. We enjoy playing with each other. Um, and the fellow said, well, how'd he do today? And he said, well, not that great. Uh, we're going to go to the practice tee right after lunch. Uh, because after 14 years, he's still looking for his game. And that was a quote. <laughs> so, and we did go to the practice tee. But uh, seriously, who is Vijay Singh golf-wise? Well, golf-wise, he's been on the tour for 14 years. First year was 1993, where he was named Rookie of the Year, the year we met. He's been one of the top five money leaders for the last 10 years. And in 2004 and 2005, he won the PGA Tour money title. In uh, 2004, he won nine times and became the first person to win more than $10 million in a single season en route to becoming the number one ranked player in the world and the PGA Tour Player of the Year. And as a little sidelight, uh, we'd been sponsoring VJ for quite a while. Forsman Little is on his shirts. And um, in 2004, I think he got more TV time than President Bush. He was leading so many tournaments all the time. And the great shame of it was that we actually had nothing to sell, uh, which was too bad. But in 2005, he won four times and had 18 top 10 finishes. And overall, as you just saw, he's won three majors. He's won 51 world golf titles, and 17 of those were after he turned 40. Um, as you also saw, VJ learned golf in Fiji from his dad, who was an airplane technician and also taught golf. As you know, he is known as one of the hardest working guys on the tour. And I can assure you that he has a practice routine that, frankly, is as tough as and demanding as any professional athlete in any sport. He had to come a long way. He had to overcome a great deal, and he had to work very hard to get to where he is today. All of this, in my opinion, a testament to his determination and courage. Most importantly for me, VJ Singh is a good guy. He's a really good guy. He's a believer in old-fashioned values. He works hard at his craft. He's a family man. He's a straight shooter. And he's a guy that people who know him love being around. BJ, we know that in Hindi your name means victory. And tonight you are victorious for sure as you receive golf's highest honor, which you richly deserve. Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to introduce my golfing partner, who's a little bit my son, a little bit my father, and all together my really good friend, all wrapped into one, B.J. Singh.
waited so long, I, I lost my nervousness now, you know, so. Uh, what part of 10 minutes uh, you guys don't know? <laughs> I've, been, I've been told 10 minutes speech and that's it. And I've been practicing 10 minutes speech for so long, uh, I don't know what time zone you guys are on, but. <laughs> anyway, I'm a little nervous, so bear with me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shoot this out of the hips a little bit, so. Uh, Teddy Forsman, thank you, Teddy, for introducing me up here. Uh, he's still trying to find his game, really. Uh, <laughs> But I met Teddy some 13 years ago, 14 years ago, when the great Mark McCormick introduced us. And uh, I didn't know that I was going to play with this one gentleman for 14 years. Uh, we struck a great relationship, and, uh, and I really enjoyed every moment of it. Teddy, thanks again. Uh, I'm going to talk myself. Uh, I'm going to try to stretch it out for 10 minutes, OK? So bear with me. Uh, <laughs> my journey started in Fiji. Uh, as you saw, my, uh, my clubhouse, it said Nandi Airport Golf Club. That's where I, I began playing golf. Uh, that's it right there. How about that? <laughs> and I'm just watching the TPC being built. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, I mean, look at that. Uh, and, and, the, and the membership was 25 bucks, and that was a little too hard for me to even pay. That was some, gosh, 30 years ago. So uh, I was there last year, and uh, I was there with Joey. Uh, I'm, I'm designing a golf course in Fiji, so I had to go and see my, my, golf, uh, my golf club. And uh, there was a guy still playing with uh, persimmon woods, and I said, I don't believe what I'm seeing over here. I mean, this, you know, but, and they were enjoying it. I mean, they were enjoying the game of golf and not really cared what they were using. And that was pretty much how things are in Fiji golf-wise. And um, I told Joey when I went, went up to the golf course and I said, that's the tree where I used to practice under, you know, and that's, uh, that's where I gave a lot of lessons. I actually gave lessons to my wife there. Uh, it started off outside and went from there, so. <laughs> so uh, but uh, that was Fiji, you know, and I, I, I didn't know any better, and it was probably some of the nicest time of my life. I was uh, beating balls all day and just trying to, trying to play this game, game of golf. Uh, and I love this game. I think it's, uh, it's one of the best games that I've ever known and I ever will know. Um, I traveled to Australia when I was 18. Uh, I, I, I had a very, well for me it was a successful career in Fiji. I, I won a lot of amateur events, actually all of them, so <laughs> there was nobody else to beat. So, uh, and when I went to Australia, I qualified uh, it got my tour card, but in Australia, when you qualify to get your tour card, you still have to play Monday qualifying to get into the tournament. So it was a privilege to get your tour card, but at the same time, you had to you had to qualify, and I didn't do too good on those ones. Uh, I remember playing, I think it was Kingston Heath one year with my brother, and we were actually watching Greg Norman play, and he was on this fifth hole, par three, and we were standing about 20 yards away. And the sound that came out of his shot that he hit, and I looked at my brother and I says, "That's how it's supposed to be sound. <laughs> That's how a golf ball should sound like when you hit it, you know." And and uh, not so long ago, I was playing with Greg, so that was some of the memories that I remember. Um, I didn't do very well in Australia. I was uh, an amateur trying to play pro golf, uh, I was, and I, it was a struggle. I uh, didn't make much money, actually none. So. Uh, uh, went to Asia, decided to try my luck in Asia. I thought I'd be easier playing golf in Asia, but I, they, they had the same 18 holes in Asia as well. So, <laughs> I 
and it was it was pretty hard playing golf there as well. I did not make uh, I could not make a living playing golf, so I took a job um, in Borneo, which is uh, which is uh, another island in uh, in Malaysia, and taught golf for two years. Uh, my wife Adina was there with me, and uh, it was it was great because I was earning money and giving a lot of lessons. I got pretty good at that. So George, if you uh, want to take a lesson, it's not going to happen in in uh, Bob Hope either. So <laughs> no, I I just got a withdrawal uh, slip over here. <laughs> so, um, but I I enjoyed it and I earned a lot of money. Uh, for me was uh, and met some really good friends in uh, in Scot in uh, in Borneo that came from Scotland and uh, they kind of convinced me that that's where I should go uh, go play golf in Europe and uh, so with my 2,000 pounds in my pocket I, I left for Scotland to win the British Open and uh, that was 1987 uh, unfortunately I didn't qualify for the Open but uh, I stayed on there and uh, you know did some odd jobs uh, here and there. Was bouncer in one of the nightclubs for a while and and got my aggression from those people and uh, and and did pretty well actually. You know I practiced hard, played all over Europe on the mini tours and got my tour card in uh, 1988. I actually finished second to Panovic and he's still bragging about that. So. Uh, but it was it was it was fun. I, I really enjoyed it, and and playing all over Europe was difficult. You know, I had to get visas. Come, you know, coming from Fiji, you need visas to go to every country in uh, in the world. And I almost thought I had to get visa to get back to my own country at one time. You know, so it was so difficult. Uh, and the currency changes in in Europe, and um, the language it was it was pretty difficult to get around, especially with not enough money in your pocket. Uh, I remember one time, the first break I ever got was I was playing in France in, uh, I think it was 1989. And it was a par three event and I took this shot, it was an eight iron shot. And the ball landed past the pin and started spinning back and, and this lady behind started jumping up and down. And, and I looked up and there was Dina jumping up and down and I looked at my fellow playing partner and I said, well that should be very close. And the guy said, no, I think that went in. And I said, oh my goodness, that's got a car for this hole. You know, the hole in one, is they, they got a hole in one prize, it's a car. And all I could think of was how much money am I gonna make selling that car? So, <laughs> and that's a, that's a fact. And, and that, was a, that was one of the biggest break I ever got. And, uh, and I sold the car and two weeks later, I won my first event in Italy. And uh, voila, I mean, I won a few more events in Europe and uh, my first ever tournament in in America, funny enough, was uh, was an invitation to Bay Hill Arnold's tournament, and uh, and I've never never since missed a, a Bay Hill Bay Hill event, and it's been good to me. And I finished second in that event when I went uh, when I came over, and finished uh, really w high up in four other events that year uh, to retain my tour card. And uh, I didn't have to go to the dreaded tour school that everybody talks about. Uh, and uh, a year later, I won my first event in America. That was uh, Westchester Classic. And 29 victories later, here I am, Hall of Famer. So. <laughs> uh, I owe everything to golf. I think golf. Without golf, I don't think I would have done any of this. Uh, golf gave me this ability to, to travel the world, play, meet so many wonderful people, travel to so many different places. Uh, it's, uh, it's something that not everybody can say. I mean, I, I come from Fiji and, and travel the world and play golf and enjoy something I do and be successful at it. I think it's... Uh, it's it's a dream come true, and I, I really really enjoyed doing it, and uh, I still do. Um, 
And I always thought that the only way I could, I could manage to be successful in the game was by playing golf and hitting balls and getting good at what I do. And that was my motto. I just said, you're just going to go out there and beat balls and beat balls until you know what exactly you're going to do. And when I did go to Europe one time and it was cold and miserable and I'm, all I'm doing was hitting balls, not really knowing much about the golf swing, but learning it as I went along. And uh, some of the guys thought I was crazy, but uh, you know, I, I, I believed in what I was doing and uh, that got me through. I, I, I always knew that I could do it. And, and if you believe in something, I think that's, that's the best thing you can ever do is believe in yourself. And that's what I did. Well, that's me and my golf. Um, I'd just like to thank some of the organizations that, are, that have given me the, the freedom to play. Um, PGA Tour for letting me play here in America. I think when I first came over, Dean Beeman was the commissioner. Dean, thanks very much. Uh, PGA of America. Uh, being a club pro, I know how, how you run, and I think you guys do a great job, and I'm, I'm really proud of the way you, you treated me and, and, and very happy the way you treated me, and I thank you for it. Uh, PGA European Tour, when I, when I did go to Europe, they, they opened their arms for me. I'd like to thank you. And IMG for managing me for the last 15-odd years. Uh, Mark McCormick, the late Mark McCormick, and... Uh, Associates and now Teddy Forsman. There are a few friends that I need to thank. Um, I can only remember some of you, but if I do forget, uh, I know who you are and I hope you, and I thank you for, for being my friend and, and supporting me through my career. But first of all, Teddy, for being my friend for all these years, You've been always there for me. I, I thank you again. Uh, Greg Hopkins, Cleveland Golf, who, who believed in my ability and, and signed me up a few years ago, and uh, we did great, great, great things together. My one coach, uh, Farid Ghidra, he's in, he's in Sweden right now, and I'm sure he's freezing. <laughs> but. Uh, He's been a friend of mine for over 18 years. I met him in Africa when I was playing there, and uh, you know he got to learn about my golf swing, and uh, and we became friends ever since. And uh, he always comes over here and looks over my golf swing when I need to, and uh, he's been a great friend. Freddie, if you're watching, uh, thank you for all these years. Dave Leitner, uh, Dave has been a friend of mine as long as I've been with IMG and uh, he's managed my finances and I thank you for being a friend of mine as well Dave, thank you. To Clark Jones, famous Clark Jones. Uh, what can I say about Clark Jones? Clark Jones is a manager, my manager for the last 12 years. Some good, a lot of bad. But <laughs> <laughs> Clark. Thank you. <laughs> you know, I told you I was going to get you one day. Uh, Joey D. Joey D is my trainer, my friend, uh, my, my good friend, one of my best friends. Uh, I met Joey D five years ago, and uh, there's a few times in the mornings at 4.30, he comes, knocks on my door, and says, come on, let's go. You know, and I said, it's still dark outside. He said, it doesn't matter. You got to go and do this. And 4.30s and 5.30s in the mornings and 5 o'clock in the mornings. And I thank God for Starbucks now because that's what he does. You know, it brings me Starbucks in the morning and we drink coffee and go and work out. So, but uh, my success the last five years, uh, you know, was, uh, was a lot of hard work and a lot of Joey's hard work as well. Joey took me into the gym, got me physically fit, and uh, without him, I don't think I, it would have been possible to do what I did in the last five years. Joey, thank you. Thanks for being a friend, too. And so many fans and friends around the world. Uh, I've played all over the world, and there's so many friends that I met, even 
you know, some of them come up to me and say, remember me in 1988 when you played in such and such club? And I say, yeah, sure, I remember, you know. <laughs> but, you know, and so many of them do that, and they follow my career, and, and it's not very difficult to recognize me nowadays, so, I mean, it's, <laughs> uh, but, you know, I, I appreciate that, and the fans all over the world. I think without the fans, you know, there won't be any golf. Uh, I think they, they mean a lot to the game, and even in this country, there's, you know, the fans make the golf tournaments, and I, I thank you for it. Um, the two very important persons in my life. Uh, one was born 16 years ago, uh, Cass, my son. Uh, he was, uh, he's probably the most, one of the most important things that ever happened to me. He's uh, the joy of my life. Uh, he grew up too fast, I think, you know, and now he hits the ball longer than me, and uh, I'm just so happy to be his dad. And, uh, and I'm very, very proud that uh, I have such a son, and uh, I'm sure we're going to have many, many great years together, son. Uh, there's one, one, one person that I, for, I have not forgotten, but I'm going to mention her now, my wife, Adina. We met some 25 years ago, like I said, at the driving range in Fiji. Started outside and, you know. <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, and she traveled everywhere with me. She traveled to Australia, to Asia, to, to Europe. Uh, was in Borneo with me. Uh, one little bedroom, uh, which was a, also a living room and also a bathroom and you know, also a kitchen. So, and we, we, we did that for two years. Went to Europe and had our beautiful son. And, and here we are in Australia, I mean, in, in America. <laughs> and uh, I mean, if there's anybody in this world that needs to share this uh, award with, is, is you. And uh, I think this, this award is, is, is as much as mine as it is as it, as yours. Okay, so thank you. And thanks again to golf. I think without golf, you know, golf took me to so many wonderful places and has brought me over here and met all you beautiful people. And uh, I'd just like to say thank you. Without, without this game, I don't think I would, uh, I'd probably be still in Fiji and God knows what I would have been doing. Um, to the selection committee, to voting me in, in in the Hall of Fame, I really, really, really am proud of this, and I think this is one of my biggest achievements in life and something that I will take, take to bed forever. And uh, I just, uh, I can't say enough. I'm, I'm really proud and, and I love this game. Thank you very much. Good night. <laughs>